For this session of Shaking Through, we recorded Pattern is Movement. Now this is a band from Philadelphia. Uh, the two members are Andrew Thibodeau and Chris Ward. From what we understand, this might be the last thing that Andrew and Chris record together as Pattern is Movement. We really appreciate the fact that they would entrust us with this, this whole experience, wrapping it up. The whole song was going to be organ, drums, and vocal, and that's it. Maybe the strangest thing was that everything was recorded completely out of order. Chris told us, we're gonna do the organ first, then we're gonna do lead vocals, then we're gonna do drums. So this really just smacked of everything being wrong, everything being out of order. We found a pipe organ locally, and we found St. Peter's Episcopal Church in South Philly. They have probably one of the greatest specimens of a perfectly kept pipe organ from the 1930s. The organ console was maybe one of the most beautiful vintage instruments I've ever seen in my life. And, you know, again, it's set among this beautifully, brightly lit white church built sometime around the Age of Enlightenment. When we record a guitar, we have a microphone in our hand and we walk up and we put it in front of the guitar. When we record a snare drum, we take a microphone and we put it on the snare drum walk into a church to record an organ, and you're not just recording the organ, you're recording the whole church. What's great about a pipe organ is that the room turns into the actual vehicle of the instrument, right? So like, the church is now the instrument. Like, the pipe organ is almost secondary, because now the whole entire room is filled up and moving with all this air. I brought my interface from home, which is just a, a Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40, you know, very, simple budget interface. We didn't really do anything fancy. We just went straight into the preamps on the Focusrite. We ended up using three mics. We had the MicTech C5 small diaphragm condensers. So that was a stereo pair. And then we had the AA440 ribbon mic. I mean, obviously this will be for the like low end thunder. Yeah. And I think those, those bright mics will be for the atmosphere. The acoustics in here are amazing. Yeah. And the organ is unbelievably nice. I didn't expect it to sound this good. The microphones were positioned about halfway up the, the center aisle of the church. I think we'll get the best bass somewhere along the way here yeah. towards the floor. Yeah. And then the bright stuff just at ear level. I mean, honestly, like, where do most humans stand in this church? Like, their heads are about this high. Yeah. Maybe a hundred years ago, their heads were about this high. <laughs> we probably could have been running around the room, testing different angles, different places. We could have gone up into the balconies, but um, we liked what we heard almost right away from where we placed those mics. So we just went with it. Quite an awesome sound. Yeah, it's beautiful. Cool. All right, let's break it down. Okay. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Great job. Thanks, man. When we were done recording the organ, we packed up, we got back in the cars, and we drove back to Minor Street. When we got back, we set up the drums, and we set up the vocals. For Andrew's vocal, we used the AKG 414. That went into the API 312 and was compressed with the warm audio 1176. Andrew, if we just let it roll, you want to sing along and we can kind of get levels and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Something happened to me. 
it was pretty clear that Andrew wasn't going for something technical, you know? He was going for something purely emotional. Sounds great. Jesus, it sounds great. There's a balance between uh, something sounding um, technically right, but emotionally right also. And there's a, a, a sweet spot in between those two for me vocally. Shaking through sets can be pretty noisy, right? Anybody who listens, who downloads the raw tracks and remixes a vocal will inevitably hear a camera person drop a lens cap, or they'll hear somebody pop open a camera and change the battery. There's things going on all around while we're doing these recordings. Andrew, I'm gonna tell you, this is the quietest a shaking through has ever been. Like, everybody's just dead silent listening, which is awesome. That's good. Yeah. All right, here we go. When we were setting up for Chris's drums, uh, we started with like our, our three mic overhead, and we wanted to use the, the 440 as a center overhead, but then we were listening back and it just, all the drums were kind of sounding like distorted or there's just, something was wrong with it. Cole says, or the 440 sounds weird. It's like this 40. Which pre is it again? MCI. I think it could be that. 14? Yeah. I and mean, we can put the Coles in instead and see if it is behaving. Hey Chris, play the, the, the toms again. How's this, man? Better. Better? Yeah. Shit. I wonder if we messed up the uh, ribbon on the 440. So it didn't really seem like the 440 actually survived the trip back from the church. But it ended up working with the coals. That's great. I mean, Andrew, Andrew flipped out. What? <laughs> it's really hard to record drums last. Even a drummer playing perfectly with a click track has their own swing and their own vibe. And any musician on a record is playing to that. In fact, it worked out fine. Because they've done things like this before. They can play very well to what each other presents in the performances. In the mix, um, there's kind of uh, like three, three different levels, kind of. Like Brian kept talking about them as like Russian nesting dolls, you know? The big one, and then there's a little one inside of that, and the little one inside of that. So like in this song, it's like the organ is the big one. It's in this huge space. The drums sit inside of that space that the organ is in. And then the vocals are the really dry up front element of it. It's, it's a difficult mix, but there's only drums, organ, and vocals in the song. You don't need to be microscopically EQing this, this thing that already sounds so good. It was more so just about like knowing when to leave things be and when to not leave things be. This was an awesome opportunity to get to record Pattern as Movement's last work as a duo, as a group. It didn't feel like this was a band that was, you know, calling quits. It felt the whole time like this was a really unique project and everybody was invested in it and really comfortable with what they were doing and, and what they were giving to it. It was really amazing to see that for them. Shaking Through is produced by Weathervane Music, a nonprofit dedicated to supporting independent music and the community that surrounds it. Your support helps sustain this series, which creates bold new art and resources to inspire the independent music community. 
get involved, go to weathervanemusic.org.